welcome back. This is Kirsten from JK Fiber Arts. Today we are going to uh, make some art baths with these amazing Kuporth locks. Uh, this is a part of the uh, massive lock haul that I got at uh, Maryland Sheep and Wool 2023. Uh, and um, I was just blown away by how soft this was. I was not expecting it. And when you feel it like this, it's not next to skin soft. But uh, once you um, open the locks and uh, drum card it, it is really just gorgeous. I got these locks at Maryland Sheep and Wool from uh, the Malik family farm. And uh, you may have seen my uh, premiere video I put out in the middle of this week, which was my Malik family farm field trip. And it was a lot of fun. And I made a little felted uh, shawl, which was a super fun project with uh, Navid and Rahina. And um, we did a little spinning and he showed me his bees and it was just a great time. But back to these locks, uh, they are amazing. They are super duper uh, fluffy and I love the way they've dyed them. They have some really amazing colors. I have uh, some other bats coming up that you will see the uh, wide variety and gorgeousness of their colors. I met Naveed in the breed tent and he directed me to uh, his wife's booth where uh, she had all these amazing bins of dyed locks. The place is like a candy shop. They just have all these gorgeous zillions of beautifully dyed locks. So what we're gonna do today is I am going to use my newly acquired uh, lock pop from Clemens and Clemens, which I also got at Sheep and Wool. We're gonna open these up, throw them into my bowl here, and then we are going to blend them on my drum carter. So this is going to be um, almost entirely Coopworth. I have 10 to 15 grams of this uh, beautiful Merino silk that I think I'm gonna add to it. We'll see if it floats my boat when the time comes around. I might try for something more green actually. Um, but uh, that is the plan to add just a little something to it because you know me, I can't do just a plain art bat. I gotta add stuff to it. Uh, this is um, my lock pop here. And the way this works, uh, and it, it does take a little bit of work on the, the front end, but it's totally worth it. Uh, you take the lock and you put it on and you just pull like this and it opens the end of the lock and then you just put the other end on and you do that and it opens it up and it also, the little vegetable matter that's left in there will just fall out. Um, so, and then you add it to your bowl and I'm just gonna keep doing that. And I'm gonna open all these up so I can make some beautiful uh, drum carded locks here. You can see how that works. Oh, it's already so much softer. It's just crazy. It's really, really nice and soft. So I'm going to, uh, my plan I think is to blend these together. We'll see what uh, we think looks best once we get started here. And you can do this for core spinning too. You can just put this in your little lock pot and throw it into your, your basket that you're gonna use to um, spin straight from the locks. And I am going to experiment with that too because I have plenty of locks to try all the techniques. Just look at how beautifully these are dyed though. Oh, they're so pretty. Look at that. Look at this gorgeous, look at this gorgeous purple. It's so pretty. So I am just going to continue to put these locks on here. And you can see I just got a big piece of vegetable matter out of that one. Beautiful. Exactly the way it's supposed to work. There you have it. I have uh, gone ahead and I made all of these wonderful locks and I had them in my bowl here. Erlene was keeping them warm for me. Uh, and then what I um, thought I would do, since I haven't worked with these before, um, usually when I have a, a raw fiber like this, I will run it through on the six to one ratio on the drum carter. And so I did that with this first because I wanted to see how it would blend. Um, and it looks pretty good. I look at these white ones, it's so floofy. Um, but I think what I'm gonna do is pass it all through once, like uh, I did for the white on the six to one. And then I am going to change the belt to the four to one and then do a, a standard uh, art bat blend. So I'm going to start here. I'll just grab these purple locks and we'll put them on. Zoom in here. So it doesn't really matter how you put them on. I think I'm just gonna try to stick to the center strip here. Oh, the 
I see a little piece of it still matter I missed. This dye job is so pretty. It is just gorgeous. Uh, so I'm just trying to stick kind of to the center here. And I'm gonna burnish this down a bit. matters zero what direction these go on. You can even put them in uh, perpendicular, it just doesn't matter. Uh, it'll actually make it a little bit floofier if you put them in perpendicular. Take this off here. Dolphin strip to the top. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to be too particular when you take this off because we're going to run it all through again, anyways. as I can. I don't want to have much waste here. So here is the purple. Look at that. Looks really pretty. Here I have the uh, one pass through on the six to one ratio here. Um, this beautiful, look how pretty this is. And it's already super floofy. Look at that. So I'm going to um, switch my band, my drive band here, to a, a four to one ratio. And um, let's get blending, I'm very excited. I'm going to add in, I showed you earlier some options. Uh, and what I decided to go with is this. This is a Merino Silk Blend. And look at that, I think it's gonna go really nice. Let's give a little extra something here. So I have uh, switched my band to the uh, four to one drive. And when I do come to uh, little bits of vegetable matter as I go along, I do pick them out because I try to keep my equipment as clean as possible. Uh, and I can't say that enough. If you put um, dirty wool into your drum carter, it's going to pulverize the dirt, all the VM, and uh, it will um, make your drum card really dirty. All right, let's get going here. So let's start with some purple. Let's just pull a chunk off. It doesn't even matter what direction we put this in. Every time, uh, I'll vacuum later. I'll just throw it on the floor. <laughs> I think what I'm gonna do is uh, do this like a little progressive type thing have more blue than any other color. So we're gonna do heavy on the blue here. And um, let's just try to blend these colors together. I really love them. And I'm gonna put the green on the blue side here. And then I do want a little bit of white. I love this white too, this is so pretty. I'm just going to put this in. Hopefully this isn't going to be too thick. Ooh, I might have made it too thick. No harm, no foul. Just going to pack this in. And we're just going to keep. 
keep on keeping on. Ripping chunks. I'll go with uh, more of this beautiful blue. Purple. And a little bit of white. And a little bit of green. This is looking really nice. Let's show that on there. So far though, it feels really quite good. Let's add some of this silk. pretty. I do like the blue, green, purple combo. I did one, uh, that art bath that I did the deep. This isn't quite the dark green that I had, but, uh, I, I can see how it's somewhat reminiscent of that, but boy, you can't really beat that color combo. I'm sort of attracted to it right now. <laughs> uh, however, I do have some other locks, uh, and I just pulled these out because I thought these colors look great together. Um, but I have another bunch of these, and I'm going to do a different one, and I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be uh, uh, out of my usual colorway, but I think it's going to look great. It's got a lot of orange in it. And um, I don't think any green, so... And now it's going on really easy. Love it. And the white. Where should we put the white? Let's do the white here. I'm just going to actually do the white just really light and open. And I'm just going to put it right on top so we get a little bit of a blend going here. Again, I like to make sure my liquor in stays mostly clean because once it starts getting stuff on it, everything will just keep sticking to it. And nobody wants that. So I'll just take this extra off of here. There we go. I think what I'm gonna do is just kind of put it all through. I'm just gonna make this nice and wide and I'll just do like a whole silk layer. That will look cool. As long as I don't get it on my burnishing brush. A little tight on space here. There we go. I set up my drum carter a little too far to the end today.
really excited. This is the most excited, uh, well, secondary to the big purchase of my uh, Elite Crankless Double Wide Clemens and Clemens Drum Carter, which I have to wait till November to get. Um, this was my most exciting discovery was the, uh, the Coopworth locks. I really, really love them. So we're gonna, oh my gosh, this feels so soft already. And that's not even the silk part. A little more of this silk and merino. Just opening it up so it's just a nice thin layer over everything. And all I do is I'm just taking it off the liquor and sticking it back on the drum carter. This looks lovely. All right, let's put this last little uh, icing on the cake here. And I didn't use anything sparkly in this for the first time in forever, so. This is gonna be really nice and smooth. that'll do it. Oh, look how pretty that is. I think I'm going to stop and take a picture of the drum carter. Let's get our strip up here. There you go. Get that out of our way. All right, let's take this off. Pretty this looks. I think we are all set here. Let's take this off, see what we got. Oh, that looks really nice. Ooh. I'm excited to spin this. I have so many bats to spin. I'll have to do a whole another section of uh, bat spinning again. I haven't done it in a while. Hmm. And it's really cool. There's just the faintest hint of a curl here and there, which I love. But it's completely homogenized, but just the faintest little hint of a lock. Look at this. Oh my goodness. You see how pretty it is? Look at it, the, the, the little bits of silk in there. Gives it a little bit of sheen, adds a little extra level of softness. And look at this side. This is all pure locks on this uh, base layer here. Look at it. And I love this bit right here. I love it. Look at that. Let's get this all rolled up. It is very voluminous. 
<laughs> and this is actually extremely soft. Uh, it's not like alpaca soft, but it is really, really nice. And here we have it. Let's tuck this end in here. So it looks all pretty. There you go. Oh, it looks so good. And there you have it. Let's see if we can appreciate all of the, the goodness here. It's, it's night. Lately, I've been doing a lot of this at night because of work. Let's see if we can get in and see this. There's all this green. It looks a little darker than... Uh, it looks darker on my screen than it does in real life. It's a lot lighter. I don't know how to make it look lighter. I'll take some pictures and put them in at the end, uh, and I'll be able to have the right lighting. This is going to be awesome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spin this one up as soon as I can, uh, and um, I want to knit something out of it just so I can feel how soft it is. It really is nice. So if you have never considered Coopworth, you should. Um, this was so fun and so easy. Uh, and again, um, not all Coopworth is created equal. Uh, so if you feel like branching out into uh, some uh, locks and core spinning and art yarn spinning and some uh, drum carding of uh, these amazing uh, Coopworth locks, uh, I would uh, highly recommend the uh, Malik Family Farm. And I can uh, put their uh, website in the comments below. I know I've been doing a lot of these art bats lately and uh, I do have a spinning video coming up next week that I think you guys will love, um, but I do have some more of these art bats because I'm trying to get prepped for the Tour de Fleece, and then we'll be doing a lot of spinning. So until next time, spin happy.